Good morning and welcome to St. Peter's Church in Charlesfield in Suffolk. As you can see it over my shoulder behind me now. Well, I'll take a quick walk over there now. Right, this morning we are looking for someone who was very big in the world of motor racing. Now I've never done a motor racing one before. This is quite a new one for me. I'm not a great fan of motor racing, I freely admit. But it's another beautiful little country church. And you know how much I love the old countryside churches. Just going to go through the gate here. Right, the person whose uh, final resting place we are looking for today is Michael Johnson Parks. This is a beautiful old cemetery, very overgrown. They all seem to be overgrown at the moment, these, uh, these little countryside churchyards. Yeah, if you look over here behind me, you'll see what I mean. Just over my left shoulder here. Completely overgrown. But yes, Michael Johnson Parks. Now, I personally never heard of him, but when I did my research on, I found out he had actually beaten Sterling Moss. Now, Sterling Moss is an absolute legend in the world of motor racing. But Michael had beaten him actually more than once. So anyway, let's have a quick look around the cemetery while I tell you a little bit about Michael Johnson Parks. Born in Richmond, Surrey, on the 24th of September, 1931, Mike Parks was born into an automotive background as his father, John, was chairman of the Alvis Group. He joined the Roots Group as an apprentice in 1949 and worked in various capacities, including being involved in the project which, which led to production of the Hillman Imp and left the company at the end of 1962. He began his racing career initially with an MG, with his first race being at Silverstone in 1952, before acquiring a Fraser Nash. In 1957 he raced a Lotus and came to the attention of Colin Chapman who invited him to act as reserve driver for the works team at Le Mans. He then became involved with the David Fry F2 car in 1958 and 1959. Then in 1960 drove a Lotus Elite for Sir Gawain Bailey before moving to Tommy Sopwith's Equip Endeavour in 1961 where he drove in sports cars and Formula Junior. He also drove a Ferrari 250 GT for Marinello concessionaires and made headlines by beating Sterling Moss on more than one occasion in it. Plus, at 1961 Le Mans race, he and Willy Marese finished second in a Ferrari Testarossa. In 1962, he and Lorenzo Bandini co-drove a Ferrari at Le Mans. Though retired from the race and he drove a Ferrari 330LM to second place with Willy Marese in the Nürburgring 1000km race behind a winning Ferrari of Phil Hill and Olivier Gendemblem. In 1963 he and Umberto Maglioli took third place at Le Mans in a Ferrari 250p plus at the RAC Tourist Trophy race at Goodwood Mike finished a car length behind winner Graham Hill. At 1964's 12 Hours of Sabring, Ferraris were the top five qualifiers and as well as winning the race, Mike set a speed record and completed the most miles ever for a winner. However, his season was cut short by an accident when his brakes failed during testing at Medina, in which he injured his back and was out of racing for the rest of the year. In the following year, Mike teamed with John Guichet to take the 1000 km classic of Monza and they led most of the race after taking the lead from Jay Surtees and El Scarfiotti and also finished second at the Nürburgring 1000 km. 1966 saw his Grand Prix debut when after John Surtees left Ferrari the team made a special long chassis to accommodate his 6 foot 4 inch height and he finished second in his debut at the French Grand Prix and second again at Monza. His successes in sports cars continued, winning the Monza and Spa 1000 kilometers in 1966, then in 1967,
then taking victory in 1967 at Syracuse, plus second place finishes at Daytona, Monza and Le Mans. There was an impressive win in that year's international trophy at Silverstone, but disaster struck in the Belgian Grand Prix when he suffered a major accident after sliding on oil and his car somersaulted. Mike ending up laying beside his overturned Ferrari 312 with head injuries and severe leg injuries and it would be 1969 before he raced again. He continued in a management role at Ferrari while he recuperated, then made a return in the Paris 1000km in 1969. He raced for Nart and Scuderio Filippinetti through 1970 and 1971, including a 1000km race in Argentina in 1971 with Joachim Bonnier and there were strong performances including an impressive drive to 5th place in the 1972 Targa Florio with Peter Westbury in a Lola T212. Following his retirement he managed the private Scuderio Filippinetti Ferrari team and ran a team of Fiat 128s in the European Touring Car Championship plus was involved in the management of the Lancia Rally team being responsible over a period of years for the Lancia Stratos program. Alongside his racing, Mike also started flying. His first flight was in 1965 in Italy, and he went on to earn a full commercial pilot's license in America, plus held Italian and British air licenses, and was a pilot on the Safari Rally. Sadly, he was killed on August 28, 1977, in a road accident near Turin, when his car was involved in a collision with a lorry. He was just 45 years old. Michael Johnson Park. Parks. Creator, or one of the creators of the Hillman Imp. Now, I, many years ago, I nearly bought a Hillman Imp. Uh, people of my age will remember the Hillman Imp. Uh, younger people might struggle. Small little car. I think it was um, British Leyland, I'm not sure. But yeah, uh, he was a legend in the um, world of motor racing and motor engineering. I'm surprised I'd never really heard of him. And uh, doing touring car and all the rest of it, Formula 2, Formula 1, Formula Junior. It is very, very overgrown here. Right, anyway, we are coming up to his final resting place, if I can remember exactly where it is. I have actually been around the yard already and had a look, because I was a bit concerned because it was overgrown. But anyway, I'll spin you around, and we'll go and find his final resting place. Right, it's over here somewhere, if I remember rightly. I came over here this morning, and I did see some fairly new headstones. I think he's buried with his brother. And I think... Yes, here it is, the final resting place of Michael Johnson Parks. In loving memory of Michael Johnson Parks, 24th of the 9th, 1931 to the 28th of the 8th, 1977, and his brother, John Lancelot Parks, 7th of the 1st, 1944, to the 30th of the 9th, 2020. The headstone does kind of stand out amongst all these other ones. Nice and clean. But I shall put one of my river polished pebbles at the base of this headstone. But that is a final resting place of Michael Johnson Parks. Well, that is a final resting place of Michael Johnson Parks. Uh, very big in the world of motor racing back in the day, uh, beating Sterling Moss at least twice. Um, not bad considering he only went in as a backup driver. But it was unfortunate that he had his couple of accidents because they did hold him back. He could have been absolutely great if it wasn't for those accidents. Oh, this is really overgrown in here. Anyway, that is the end of another video. I do hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you did, 
please leave me a thumbs up and uh, if you haven't already then maybe consider subscribing and uh, if you do subscribe uh, make sure to hit the notification bell so that you'll be uh, notified every time I upload a new video but anyway that is it from me at St Peter's Church I will see you again on the next one wherever I am so until then bye bye for now